Hi, welcome to Protect Your Children Now with your host, Christopher Gelson with Protect Your Children Incorporated. Website is protectfrompredators.org and protectyourchildren.org. Protectfrompredators.org and protectyourchildren.org. We are glad that you are here for this very important show. Man, I'll tell you, when it starts to crumble, it starts to crumble, right? Now, look, we've been getting a lot of feedback, and we understand that this is like the tippy top of the iceberg here, right? Quiet on the set, the sound of freedom, Jeffrey Epstein, the Weinstein scum guy, you know, that scumbag over there. You know, it's the tip of the iceberg. And now we're getting into rappers like Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, right? We already know R. Kelly's serving time for God knows how long for his crimes. There's talk about Cuba Gooding Jr., Jay-Z, Usher, apparently being pulled into this whole thing. And we're covering it for two reasons. One, we need to raise awareness to what's happening in Hollywood, right? I mean, parents need to be aware of what the heck is happening and the predatory nature of Hollywood, right? So, of course, we're covering that to educate people and raise awareness. The other reason we're covering is because it's not just Hollywood, okay? It's not just Hollywood. These pervs that are in Hollywood are the same pervs that are in the neighborhood. It's the same pervs that are putting the books in the libraries in the elementary schools teaching the kids about sex, right? They're the same pervs that are at the boys and girls clubs and in the churches, right? And the after school programs and living down the street. So we have to ask ourselves, what can we learn from what these predators are doing to these young actors in Hollywood? Because you know what? The tactics don't change very much. Now, sure, these actors have, you know, the threats of, hey, you're supporting your family now. And if you tell anybody what's going on, your family is going to be homeless. And, you know, you're the breadwinner. And they put them under that kind of pressure where the everyday child doesn't have that kind of pressure. But what's the end goal? The end goal is to abuse a child, right? There's many different ways to get to that point. But the pervs in Hollywood and the pervs in the community, they've got the same end goal, just different ways to go about it, right? So we need to learn what those ways are, what to look for, teach our kids what to look for. Because look, it comes down to this. These traffickers, these perverts, these predators, they don't have a crime to commit unless there's children available. So we need to ask ourselves right off the top, how are they having so much access to our children? Right? Is it social media? Yes. Are they scouting them out at the boys and girls clubs? And, and if, yes, they are. Are they getting connected from someone in the community? Yes. Are these kids being exposed to predators because parents aren't paying attention? Yes. Parents, we love you. We know your job is hard. But a lot of the cases that we've seen come across our eyes. There were warning signs and red flags, sometimes for months and months and months, right? And they were never seen. So what are those warning signs? We need to teach our kids, teach our parents. So it's important to cover this Hollywood stuff. And people will say, yeah, the Hollywood stuff is juicy. It's gossip, right? Well, that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it to raise awareness to the predatory nature of Hollywood and the predatory nature of the people out in our communities. That's the goal, right? That's the purpose. And we're glad that you're here to join that with us. Check the comments here. Let's see. We got Bryden. Welcome to the show, Bryden. Ha ha. That's actually a, a username. Ha ha. Welcome to the show. Ha ha. Yes. Marie T. Marie T is in the house. Marie T is our co-director, Protective Children Incorporated. We're glad that she is here. And about 25 others watching that we can see, plus a whole lot more on Rumble. So first, we want to just thank everybody. We have just increased in followers and subscribers in the last week. It's almost just meteoric i mean we, we've jumped hundreds and hundreds and, and of subscribers our facebook page jumped three thousand five hundred followers in the last week uh, rumble's going through the roof we went from 40 subscribers up to 160 so we're, we're very happy about that 
not because it's like, oh, we're getting popular. No, not, that, that's not even important to us, right? The reason why we want subscribers and followers and people who tweet and retweet and like and share is because it's spreading awareness, right? That's the goal. We're a three and a half year old organization, not for profit down here in Tampa, Florida. And yes, we're in Tampa. It's beautiful here. Just to let you know. 82 degrees today. Just, yeah, enjoying it. But we're just trying to do our part, right? And we're very thankful for the new subscribers and new followers of our page and the people that are joining the show. So thank you for that very much. Who else we got here? Let's see. Uh, okay, let me see. All right, cool. Well, let me first tell you about our website, which is protectyourchildren.org. Protectyourchildren.org. Let me share it on the screen. Our website has tons of stuff. Everything is free. Uh, of course, who's going to charge to protect kids? Believe it or not, there are some organizations that we've come across that will charge money to do like a zip code predator search. Like, what is wrong with somebody? They're going to charge like a single mom money or forget, forget that, a married couple money to protect their kids. Well, it's written in our bylaws and in our mission. We will never charge for protection information. That's absolutely ridiculous to do that. So uh, our website here, I want to draw your attention to this in-depth protection packet right here at the top. This in-depth protection packet right here. It's a 12-section in-depth protection packet. It's in English and Spanish, Espanol. And um, if you click here, you can safely download it. You can share it, print it, copy it, do whatever you want. These are detailed guidelines on how to keep your kids safe. It describes predator situations, the personalities of predators, how to identify them, all the warning signs, the lookouts, just tons and tons of stuff in this guideline packet free to download from protectyourchildren.org. So definitely check that out, protectyourchildren.org, along with all the other great stuff that we have. You can do... Um, Zip code predator searches right on our website. All right. You can learn how to protect your kids online. All our live shows are hosted here. This is your one-stop place for everything. All the links to our social media is right here as well. If you don't follow us on all of these different areas, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Rumble, the links are right there. So please join us on those social media sites. Really quickly, we also have merchandise that we use to raise awareness. We will be up front and tell you that we make $2, dollar, $2 off of each one of these products. It's not a lot. The goal isn't to get rich. The goal is to raise a couple of bucks to help promote the content that we produce, to get the word out, to advertise our website, to do web hosting, all that stuff that we do. These live shows cost money. Yep. That's all being paid for right now on a volunteer basis. And uh, we have the merchandise to spread awareness about our website and our mission and what we do. So you can definitely check that out, protectyourchildren.org. Click on, click on the merchandise tab, merchandise tab. And I know this is all like housekeeping stuff, but uh, really quickly, uh, this is our donation page right here. We're a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. Everything we do, everything we do is paid for right now by the directors of this organization, okay? We have a couple of donations that trickle in here and there. But we are putting out a lot of money to run this day-to-day -day operations. It's all coming out of our pockets. And uh, we're very limited in what we can do with that because we do have jobs and we do have bills, right, ourselves. So if you feel led to make a donation tax deductible, you can do that on our website, protectedchildren.org. All right. Thank you for that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Maria, Maria S. Miller, thank you. Thank you. She said, I thought Justin was 15 when his parents let him stay with Diddy and his parents are just as guilty. Well, that's a great point. We're going to get into that in a little bit. He was actually 13 years old when he went with Usher. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Usher reportedly saw, yeah, the parents signed some kind of a 48-hour temporary custody thing. We're going to get into that. That's just absolutely insane. And then Usher reportedly handed him off to Diddy for like a two day ditty party at, yeah. So we're gonna get into that, but uh, thanks for commenting on that. And we're glad that you are here. Each week we do a hero segment. Yes, we do a hero segment to highlight what great kids are doing, to highlight kids that are on a mission to help others that are making a difference in the world. 
whether it's saving someone's life or helping someone less fortunate. Our goal at Protect Your Children Incorporated is to protect kids from predators. <clears throat> Excuse me, predators. Got a little scratchy throat tonight, forgive me. Hmm. By the way, this mug is available on our website, merchandise, protectyourchildren.org. Um, so we try to highlight kids that are doing great things because, you know, when kids get abused or, God forbid, trafficked or anything else, it throws them off course, right? It throws off their life. They suffer the rest of their lives. And, of course, we don't want that to happen, and neither do you. <clears throat> and as long as kids are protected, then they can go on to do the great things that they are planned have planned for them to do in their life. So when we see kids doing great things, we like to bring it to you. So this week's hero segment, it's about two minutes long. Let's check this out and we'll uh, be happy together at this hero kid. Let's check it out. I told them that I saved somebody's life and they're like, oh yeah, okay. Like they didn't believe me. So, uh, Lunchtime at Indian Hills Middle School in Clive quickly turned into a life-saving lesson. The eighth graders' instinct made all the difference in the world. Sure did. KCCI's Laura Nichols shows us how this guy actually saved his classmate. Laura. Middle schooler Colby Cook says he's never actually been formally trained to do the Heimlich maneuver, but he's seen enough TV to take a shot at it. If you're in middle school, it's the best time of the day. The clock strikes and the race through the lunch line begins. But as two friends sat together last week, the typical lunchroom chatter turned silent. I got a piece of meatball stuck in my throat and I couldn't breathe. While everyone around seemed confused and backed away. So I knew to just stand up and do the sign for choking. Eighth grader Colby Cook took a chance. I didn't really know like what to do, but I learned... Like, I'd seen it on TV a few times. I was like, hey, might as well try it. All it took was one pump. Like that. And in a matter of seconds... Yeah, it immediately came out and I could breathe again. And then they started congratulating me, which made me feel really good. Oh, very proud of them. But there were still some skeptics. I told them that I saved somebody's life, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Like, they didn't believe me. So, um, then, uh, the next day, Kyle comes over to my house with a gift card saving and a card saying that I saved his life and then my parents believed me. <laughs> Definitely should be a lesson that all kids should know how to do. For two buddies, a scary few seconds turned into a lesson for all. Don't choke again. Yeah. <laughs> now luckily Colby's parents believe him now, now that he's on the news I guess. The school's principal Shane Christensen says he's, this has really been a good thing because students have been talking about this and now they all want to learn the Heimlich Maneuver and it's an important thing to know. You're probably all waiting around for somebody to choke, which would not <laughs> be a good thing, but nevertheless they'll know how to do it. Exactly. Great story, Laura. Thank you very much. Well, the Red Cross says it is a good idea for everyone to know the proper way to perform the Heimlich Maneuver and CPR. They offer a variety of first aid classes year-round and online. We put information and links on our OS3 website, kcci.com, to help you find a class. Woohoo! That's awesome, right? Isn't this fantastic? We love to bring those stories. It's a little levity with the heavy stuff that we teach every week. Yeah, we got to bring the darkness to you, but we try to bring a little levity to it. Yeah, listen, if we don't have a little hope or laugh a little bit, we're just going to cry, right? We're just going to cry all the time, and that's not healthy. So, but it's awesome. You know, it is so important. We overlook those little things, right? Learning the Heimlich maneuver, like knowing the sign for choking, you know, teaching your kid to immediately go and help somebody if they're in need. You know, those are so important, uh, those things to learn. And we're just happy that we're able to share that with you each week on the Teen Hero segment this week. So, all right. What's going on in the chat here? Let's see. Uh, Bryden says he's got a roll, but he'll be back to watch this, which is a great point. Yes, podcast is available about. About 15 minutes after the show ends, and it's available on all platforms, Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook groups, Facebook business, Twitter, all over the place. So definitely encourage people to uh, to uh, check that out. Maria says, uh, Marla says, uh, it was Usher. Thank you for the correction. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the whole pyramid, man, it's just crazy. We're going to get into that in a little bit, man. It's just so, it's so unbelievable what's happening. It's almost like a, 
a, a pedophile, we're going to say it that way for the algorithm, a pedophile mill. It's just the kids come there, the parents bring them there, and then they get ushered. Hey, look at that, usher. Ushered into this, this dark, dark, evil world. And uh, if the parents aren't on top of things, if they're not paying attention to their kids, then their kids are going to go downhill. We've been seeing that with Quiet on the set. We've been seeing it with Nickelodeon and everything the past couple of weeks. And it's unbelievable. But again, it's not just in Hollywood. If you look at our graphic, this is why. I'm going to point out something to you. See the graphic? The lower part of your screen looks like all those little light bulbs all over the place. You know what those are? That is a quarter mile, a quarter mile radius around two elementary schools down here in Florida. Those are predators. Those, have, those are arrested predators within a quarter mile of two elementary schools. We couldn't even squeeze them all on there. We had to crop down the photo for the background. But this just goes to show you, this is not just a Hollywood issue. This is hitting right at home. All these people, I mean, there's hundreds of them that have been arrested and they're living in our communities. They're living right near the schools, right near the bus stops, watching the kids. And it's like your, your kids have to be super alert, be on guard, be aware of these people. And you can do zip code predator searches in a number of places. You can go to our website, protectedchildren.org, click on zip code predator search, click on your state, and it'll take you right to that state's website where you can put your address in, zip code, person's name, maybe see if they've been arrested before. You can do all that on our website, protectedchildren.org. Maria Morales, welcome to the show. Glad you are here. I want to bring you something uh, really quick from Matthew Lawrence. Do you guys, do you remember who Matthew Lawrence is? Matthew Lawrence. Yes, Matthew Lawrence, child actor. He's growing up now. He has about a 45-second message that he wanted to tell people, right? And we want to bring it to you right now. Let's check out what Matthew Lawrence has to say. Right. There have been many times in my life where I've been propositioned to get a huge role. I've lost my agency because I went to the hotel room, which I can't believe they would send me to, of a very prominent Oscar award-winning director who showed up in his robe, asked me to take my clothes off and said he needed to take Polaroids of me, and that if I did X, Y, and Z, I would be the next marvel character i didn't do that and my agency fired me because i left this this director's room and along those lines a lot of my a lot of these stories a lot of my other male friends have gone through with both men and women in this industry but there's a double standard and this is where i bring terry cruz terry cruz comes out and says it people are laughing at him right so matthew lawrence of course uh, boy meets world mrs doubtfire all host of other stuff and he's coming out and talking about it now, too. Now, think about that. He said that he was propositioned by so many people. And he goes on further in that interview to talk about how it was mostly men were propositioning him. And then, of course, he gets called up to this dressing room, right? And this, this person, and he won't mention the names, which really just irks the crap out of me. But probably for legal reasons or whatever. But, you know, the guy basically, hey, take all your clothes off. We'll get pictures of you. Really? As a kid? All right, what? I mean, really? That's insane. So just another child actor coming out saying, look, this place is a lion's den for children. A lion's den. Oh, man. It's Matthew Lawrence. Unbelievable. Let's check the comments here. What's going on? Uh, yeah, Marie T says they shouldn't be allowed to live by schools, parks, etc. You know, the crazy thing is Florida has a law and it's it's like this in most states where it's a I think it's a thousand feet. They can't live within a thousand feet of a school or a bus stop or a daycare or a playground. You know, and it's like what I don't see the point of that. And unless they're on house arrest, right, where they've got an ankle monitor, what they can't go walk down the street. They, they can't go walk around the corner. They can't get down there with their smartphone and zoom in. I, I mean, it's just crazy. You know, and it's like, and, and the arguments would be, well, they kind of live somewhere. I'm like, let's put them all on an island somewhere. They can all live together on an island somewhere where there is no kids. That would be a good idea. 
That's what they should do at Epstein's Island. Turn it into like Pedo Island, right? Put all the pedos out there. There you go. They'll be right at home there, right? No kids around. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely crazy. Marla says, uh, our sheriff has a sign up for when a predator moves in within so many miles of you. Yes. And that's something else that we argue probably needs to be changed, right? Because there's different tiers, different levels, right? And so if, if a predator is a certain uh, tier on the on the danger scale, the reoffend scale, then the neighborhood gets notified. You know, literally mailers will go out to everybody in that neighborhood, letting them know that they moved in, right? But most predators don't reach that that threshold. So they're just kind of living among everybody, you know, and nobody even knows they're there unless you're doing predator searches, right? And it's like, you want me to look up my neighbor? Yes, look up your neighbor. See if your neighbor's got a criminal record. Nothing wrong with doing that. It's public information, right? Look it up. Look it up. Unbelievable. Lisa Mann says uh, they have a podcast where he's been very vocal about the abuse. I assume you're talking about Matthew Lawrence. Yeah, it's definitely stuff. It's definitely worth looking into. There's a lot of these people that are being brave now coming out and they're sharing their experiences, which is very hard to do. You know, it's it's they open themselves up to all sorts of threats and, and danger and, and criticism and naysayers and and stuff. But they're coming out because they know if they come out, they speak up. That they're going to protect other kids. They're going to raise awareness and they're going to protect other kids from potentially going into a lion's den of evil. So we're happy that they're doing that. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right. Uh, yeah, Miss Just reading comments. Cool. All right. Uh, so let me let me share something with you. Each each week we we do one of these. Uh, there's an Instagram channel that that does uh, predator experiments, right? And um, this one comes from an uh, Instagram uh, profile channel called uh, Saladino Joseph. Saladino Joseph. Got to give the credit where credit's due. And they bring all these to, to people to raise awareness. Now, you can tell which ones are where the kids are in on it because they'll show their face. Like, they'll show the kids' faces, you know, and the parents and everything. But there are ones where they go to the parents and they say, hey, we want to do this experiment. What do you think your kids would do in this situation? And the parent will say, yeah, let, let's check this out, but I don't want their faces on, on camera, right? So the kids don't have any idea what's happening. And this is one of those experiments. These two young girls had no idea that this was an experiment, that they were being tested to see what they would do. But sometimes we overlook these little things, the little ways that you can make a difference, the little things that you can tell your kids. So let's check this out, this predator experiment. Hey, what's up? Your, your mom is picking you up, right? Yeah. She sent me to pick you guys up. I don't know your guys' mom, by the way. Yeah, I don't, I don't know your mom. Why'd you get in the car? Yeah, well, I don't, so. Gee, what? <laughs> call, call her up. Call her up right now. Call your mom up. We're setting you guys up because you just got in my car. Like, you didn't even check with your mom to make sure that someone else was picking you guys up. You just jumped in my car and you trusted me. We wanted to test you guys, mm -hmm. and you failed. Uh, you said you knew my mom. Why'd you trust me without checking with your mom? Pretty simple, right? We saw one like that, I think it was last week or the week before, where somebody came knocking on the door. A little boy answers the door, maybe what, nine, 10 years old? And the guy says, hey, is your mom here? And the first thing the kid says, yeah, she's in the shower. But, but, wait, what? first of all, you went to the door, you opened it for a stranger, you told him that your mom was in the shower, right? And then he says, oh, I'm a friend of your mom's, so can I come in and wait for her? The kid's like, yeah, come on in, right? And then, of course, they call the mom down, and it turns out it was a, it was an experiment. But, you know, and the guy said the same thing to the boy. Like, why did you let me in? Well, he said, you know my mom. Really? So you just believed it like that? But this happens, especially with younger kids. In this case, what does that look like? Maybe middle school, maybe? Middle school girls? And they're like, yeah, my mom sent me to pick you up. Oh, okay, cool. We'll just get in your car. 
Like, no, absolutely not. Like, if, if mom's not going to be there, then somebody that the child knows is going to notify them ahead of time. They're not to get into anybody else's car. Right. I mean, it's just little things like that. And we wonder how kids end up going missing. You know, sometimes it's as simple as that. Just teaching them and say, look, here's a code word. Right. Parents do it all the time. They have a code word with their kids. If anything would happen, this is the code word. If anybody says they're there to pick you up or they're calling you and say they got to come meet you, so they need to know the code word. If they don't know the code word, then mom and dad didn't send them. Don't get in the car. You know, sometimes it's just simple things like that that make a difference. And those girls and, you know, the reaction, you know, the first thing she did is try to take off the seatbelt, like because she might have to run. Right. And then she's like her, her friends in the back. Though, what do we what do we do? What do we do? And I think she was trying to say, call 911 is what she was trying to say. And then the guy's like, hey, look, you know, we're, we're setting you up as an experiment. And it's like, are you kidding me right now? Why'd you get in the car? Well, you said you to my mom. Oh, that's good enough for me. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Absolutely nuts. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Lisa Mann says we have a code word. And yes, that's scary. It's always good to have a code word. Your kids should always have a code word that only the family and them know. That's it. Probably you and, and maybe dad, if he's around or mom, if she's around, whatever, the parents and the kid. That's it. Nobody else. I mean, honestly, no one else needs to know it unless an emergency situation comes up. Then you can then you share it with who you need to. All right. You guys remember Edward Furlong? He was known as Eddie Furlong. Eddie Furlong. Eddie Furlong was in Terminator 2. You see in his picture on our background there in the in the corner. And just precious kid, man. Great talent, great actor. Um and a lot of people, I don't know how many people remember this, but he had a pretty meaty, like meteoric fall from grace. I mean, he kind of went up and then he went right to the ground. And everyone was like, what happened to him? Like, what happened to him? You know, and it came out years ago. And this has been totally forgotten about that. He was in a predatory relationship with a woman who was much older than him, who was taking advantage of him. And we want to bring you this video really quick that talks about that. And um, it's just look for the warning signs here. And again, this comes back to parents, right? But here's another actor, precious, talented, goes into the industry, trying to do the right thing, have a good career, provide for his family, and he gets swallowed up by freaking predators. It's unbelievable. So let's check this out. Now we'll be cutting in as we go through. Long been a source of fascination and intrigue for people around the world. Over the years, many celebrities have become household names, revered for their talent, beauty, and charisma. However, alongside the glamour and glitz of Tinseltown, there is also a darker side. Today, we will uncover a Hollywood scandal that's been hidden away for far too long. From secret rendezvous to explosive fallout, we'll be diving deep into the scandalous details of the torrid love affair between Edward Furlong and Jacqueline Domac, and the scandal's impact on their careers. So buckle up and get ready to be transported back in time to the forgotten Hollywood scandal that no one saw coming. This is the Forgotten Hollywood Scandal, Edward Furlong and Jacqueline Domac's Affair. Now, let's start from the beginning. Edward Furlong didn't have a fairy tale beginning. Furlong's home life was difficult, and after a disagreement with his mother, he was sent to live with his aunt and uncle in Hollywood. In September 1990, at the age of 13, Furlong was hanging around the Pasadena Boys Club near his mother's home when he was spotted by Molly Finn, the casting director for Terminator 2. Despite having no prior acting experience, Finn encouraged Furlong to audition for the lead role of John Connor, and he ended up beating out 100 other candidates for the part. Terminator 2 Judgment Day was a huge hit, grossing over $500 million worldwide. He quickly became a teenage heartthrob and was touted as the next big thing in Hollywood. 
He was praised for his performance in the movie and was nominated for several awards, including a Saturn Award for Best Performance by a Younger Actor. However, his personal life was far from perfect. Furlong had a troubled childhood and family issues. Furlong's rise to fame and wealth caused more problems in his family as they fought over his custody. His mother, aunt, and uncle, and court-appointed lawyer were all involved in the dispute. Now, here comes the start of his downfall. In a matter of months, Furlong's guardianship vacuum made way for a relationship with a shocking age difference. The Affair this is where Jacqueline Louise Domac comes in. Domac, who was then 26 and married, met Furlong on the set of Terminator 2 after she was hired as his stand-in. It was said that the two got along well. When Furlong's guardians said that she would be a good tutor for Furlong, Domac went back to college to get a postgraduate qualification in teaching. Domac then became Furlong's private teacher but it wasn't long before their connection started to raise suspicions. In 19... All right. Let's look at a couple things here. Number one, predators usually seek out kids that have home life issues, right? Emotional issues. And, and it's almost like they can spot it. They can almost spot it. They look for needy kids, right? And we don't know how much of his home life was shared or how open he was about it. So he already goes into Hollywood. He's got home life problems, emotional issues, relationship with his mom is messed up. Apparently his dad was gone. So he was already carrying a whole lot of baggage. In comes this predator, this married 26 year old woman, right? Going after this teenager. And of course, mom says, Hey, you'd be a great tutor for my son. Well, see, I don't really have a tutoring degree. Oh, I'll go back to college and I'll get a tutoring degree just so I can tutor your child. The, there's a red flag right there, right? Someone's going to go, oh, let me go spend money, go to college, get a special degree. I'm going to do all of that so I can be right there and tutor your son. No, that's what predators would do. Would they go that far? Would they go that crazy? Yes, they would. To put themselves in a position whether through education or, or status, and to get themselves in position to be alone with, with a child or with kids. Seems to us that she had this infatuation with him right from the get-go, and she was going to do whatever she needed to do to make sure that she can get access to this child. Fully with mom's blessing. Fully with mother's blessing. Unbelievable. Let's continue. In 1992, Domac joined the crew of the drama A Home of Our Own as a tutor for the film's six underage actors, one of whom was Furlong. This was Furlong's fourth movie. His other movies were Pet Cemetery 2 and American Heart, which were smaller in scale than Terminator 2, but were still received positively. However, according to a 1994 article by Entertainment Weekly, quote, after Domac was discovered wrestling playfully with Furlong and another child on the floor of her classroom, the film's producers fired her. Furlong's aunt and uncle, who were his guardians at the time, didn't think Domac had done anything wrong, so they kept her on as his private teacher. In 1993, they also hired her as a social worker so that she could check on Furlong's well-being on the set of his next film, Brain Scan. But the situation quickly spiraled out of control. Nancy, the actor's aunt, grew suspicious of Domac and Furlong's relationship and expressed her concerns to the tutor. Instead of denying any wrongdoing, Domac replied with a disturbing statement. Quote, I know how much power I have over Eddie. I know I can make him do anything I want. To make matters worse, Furlong moved in with Domac in September of that year and he started financially supporting her with his monthly allowance of $2,500. Meanwhile, Domac began divorce proceedings from her husband. The situation escalated even further when Furlong's aunt and uncle filed a complaint with the police in January 1994, accusing Domac of statutory rape. The police questioned Furlong, but the complaint was eventually dismissed. However, Furlong decided to cut ties with his family and obtained legal emancipation from them. 
According to a 1994 New Yorker article, Furlong and Domac claimed that they had fallen in love during the summer of 1993 and started dating openly. When journalist Vernon Scott... All right. Huh. There's so many things here. Predators will always try to turn a victim against their family, right? Because the, the last thing that a predator wants is a family becoming suspicious, right? So they'll try to build up a trust with the family first, right? And if there's some broken relationship there with the child and the family, a predator will exploit that. They will convince that child, your parents don't really care about you. They don't know what's right for you, but I do. And I'll take care of you and I'll make sure everything goes the way it needs to go. Right? So it's interesting that he takes this step to be emancipated from his family. He wants to cut them off totally so that he's with her all the time. Now, the aunt sounds like she was kind of like going, getting smart there because she's like, wait a second. Something's not right here. And she's messing around with, you know, with her nephew. And the police find nothing. Now, why they find nothing? Chances are that Eddie Verlong probably denied it. He probably denied it because she had already built this bond with him, this closeness with him. He was convinced that she loved him, that she cared about him, and she wanted what was best for him. But we know what she wanted, right? And she was getting it from him. And he was groomed and manipulated into that abuse situation. And he's come out since. He's actually doing the rounds and on podcasts and somebody's talking about this and he's saying, you know, that messed me up so bad. And he goes, there's not a day where I go where I don't regret being in that relationship with that woman. You know, and the thing is, she was never charged. She was never freaking charged. Wonder where she's at today. Who knows? It's really a sad story. Let's continue. I met with Furlong for an interview. He was shocked to see Domac holding the teen's hand and attending the interview with him. The affair was kept under wraps for a while, but eventually the news broke. Furlong and Domac were spotted together at several public events, and rumors started to spread about their relationship. Furlong's fans were shocked and disappointed, and the media went into a frenzy. However, Furlong and Domac continued their relationship despite the public backlash. He once revealed to Cosmopolitan, quote, Jackie has been my rock. She accompanies me wherever I go. Otherwise, we'd feel incomplete without each other. Despite the earlier controversies, Domac remained in Furlong's inner circle and acted as his quasi-manager. She supported him through his roles in Before and After, Pecker, and American History X, in which Furlong showcased his impressive range as an actor. Their relationship lasted until October 1998, at which point Furlong was 21 and Domac was 34. Both of them maintained that they had never engaged in any sexual activity while Furlong was still underage. However, in 1999, Domac accused Furlong of being a violent domestic abuser and claimed that he owed her $110,000 in a lawsuit against him. She alleged that he had subjected her to emotional distress and a stream of, quote, verbal abuse, threats, violent outbursts, and outrageous and unlawful attacks. After their separation, Furlong went on a wild partying spree. He battled drug and alcohol addiction, which led to a months-long stint in rehab in 2001. His partying reached a boiling point when he was hospitalized after blacking out. Domac helped him get on a plane to a treatment facility, but that was likely the last time they saw each other. Domac now works as a blogger and educator under the name Jackie Day. Furlong later regretted his relationship with Domac and in a 2006 interview with People magazine called it a mistake. Quote, if I could go back in time and erase that relationship, I would. Nobody told me that it wasn't good for me. That same year, Furlong tied the knot with Rachel Bella and they welcomed a son in September. However, their marriage was rough as Furlong's drug and alcohol abuse took a toll on their relationship, leading to their divorce in 2009.
Furlong was sentenced to 180 days in jail in January 2013 after being arrested for domestic battery against his then-girlfriend, Monica Kina. In 2017, Furlong was arrested again for being under the influence of an illicit substance while trying to check into a hotel. He was given a suspended sentence of 36 months on probation. All right. So look what's happening here. You know, once predators get control of a child, it's like the damage that that does, the trust that gets broken, the relationships that can now not be formed. There's so much damage that gets done that it's it's not surprising that all this stuff took took place. Now, was he violent? Was he an abuser? We don't know. You know, I mean, he, he did have 180 days, you know, maybe he, he was getting violent. Who knows? But it's interesting that she would turn the table, right, and try to sue him, try to get money from him and defame him, right? Now, maybe that was her jumping the gun in case he was going to come out and speak about their relationship. Who knows? Right? But you can see that it, things just spiraled out of control. And, and the important thing there was he said what? Nobody told me that that relationship wasn't good for me. Now, he's assuming that people knew what was going on. And people didn't step up. Now, who, who doesn't step up, right? If there was anybody, like the aunt, she probably said something to him. I mean, she did call the police on the woman. Who, would now we find out that she's a blogger going under a different name. Like, how many more kids has she abused? We, we have to ask that question, right? But he said, nobody told me it was wrong for me. And there it goes back to the parents, back to the people that should have been protecting him throughout this whole thing. Unbelievable. And Amayo says gaslighting. Yeah. Yep. Unbelievable. Facebook user says, uh, that is so true, my goodness. And I don't know if you remember the Karate Kid. That happened to him, too. That same thing happened to him. I have to look into that. You talk about Ralph Macchio. I have to look into that. All right, let's finish this up. Why did he complete a six-month drug rehab program? And he has been sober ever since. Furlong has been open about how his addictions affected him and his loved ones. He is currently enjoying a happier life and has a, quote, wonderful relationship with his son. He now feels better about himself. Furlong appreciates the simplicity of his life now and the fact that he wakes up not having to worry about going to jail or being hung over. He hopes to continue living a sober life as it is the best thing he has ever done. Furlong's life definitely went downhill after meeting Domac. Although their scandal was widely known at the time, it has since been largely forgotten. However, it is a cautionary tale about the dangers of child stars being left without appropriate guardianship and the exploitation that can result. For Long and Domac's relationship was extremely exploitative. But the scandal is not just about them. It's also about the larger culture of Hollywood and the industry. It's about the power dynamics and exploitation that exists, and the way that young, vulnerable actors are often taken advantage of. So, what did we learn from the scandal involving Furlong and Domac's affair? Well, it's that exploitation and abuse can happen in any industry, and that it's important to hold those in positions of power accountable for their actions. We can learn that consent is crucial and that healthy relationships are built on trust and respect. And we can learn that by speaking out and taking action, we can create a better world for ourselves and for future generations. Remember, it's up to each of us to create a world where exploitation and abuse are not tolerated and where everyone is treated with the respect and dignity that they deserve. While the media may have moved on from this scandal, the impact it had on these individuals' careers and personal lives cannot be forgotten. It definitely rocked the entertainment industry to its core. All right. Sad. Sad story, really. I mean, right from the get-go. And it just goes to show you that 
without the proper supervision, without proper teaching, without knowing all the warning signs before you're jumping into something, that these kids are left so vulnerable to people like that. You know, and in court of public opinion, we know she's guilty as hell, right? That's that's our opinion, right? But we can see through it. But I guess in the court of law, there wasn't enough to charge her. So now she's running around out there blogging and doing whatever. And yeah, sad story. Edward Furlong. But the good news is he seems to be pushing through. He's been sober now, I believe, three or four years. Um, one day at a time, as he says, he's trying to, you know, have a good life now. His son is absolutely adorable and he's got a great relationship with him. So perhaps he's going to, to, bring, to come through this. And now he's being a voice to warn others and to educate people about the dangers. And uh, that's what we call moving from victim status to survivor status. So we're very happy that Edward Furlong from Terminator 2. So remember him as John Connor from Terminator 2, right? Glad that he's moving along. Oh, Anna says, oh, little Bow Wow. Oh, the new karate kid. All right, we got you, little Bow Wow, Will Smith's son. I heard his bodyguard got him. I haven't confirmed that, though. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of talk. Uh, we did hear about that, actually. Um, it's not confirmed, you know. And uh, uh, I love it. Victim to Victor. Anna, you're right on the money. Victim to Victor. That's right. That's right. And, you know, these these traumas, they stay with these kids through adulthood. But there is a difference. You know, they can stay trapped in the effects of it or they can grow from it. They can become stronger from it and they can help others and they can be victorious still. And it looks like Edward Furlong is doing that one day at a time, which just cheers, cheers up our heart just to see that. I want to take a second before we get into the P. Diddy situation um, and just clarify some things. Uh, two things really quick. On our last week's live show, the background image that we put up, right? There was a reason that was there. And we had probably 700 comments on that live show last week. And it was quite the chore, honestly, keeping up with everything. We probably missed a lot. But people were saying, you know, what about Epstein? You know, uh, what about Bill Clinton? What about Oprah Winfrey? What about all the, you know, these other people? And if you listen to the podcast, if you listen to the show, we explained what the background photo was all about. That background image, right, were people that had already been convicted, right, or ones that were being investigated that could eventually face charges. Right now, even though we think there probably should be, in our opinion, Oprah's not being investigated for the missing girls at her African school. Yeah, there's been hundreds of girls gone missing from her school down there. We're just saying, you know, we'll do a video on this, you know, in, in the future. But as an organization, people don't understand this. We cannot come out and accuse anybody of anything. We can't come out and accuse a famous person of doing something wrong. You know, you guys on your Twitter feed or your Facebook feed, you, you can say that all you want, you know. But as an organization, we'll get sued. We'll, we'll get sued because we have a platform, because we are incorporated, because we're you know, an official 501c3. We can't go out there and say Oprah's guilty of this, right? We just, we can't do it. In our personal lives, that's different. And we may agree with you, but on our platforms, we can't do that, right? So everybody who's saying, hey, you know, how come you didn't put this person up? How come you didn't put that person up? What about them? You're not protecting kids. You're not showing this. You're not showing. <laughs> First of all, you can only fit so many photos in a background, right? But listen, we are aware of the high profile nature of, of those names. Do we think Bill Clinton's a sleazeball? Absolutely, absolutely right. Do we think some of what Trump did in his younger days was sleazy with women? Absolutely. Oprah with her missing girls in Africa, sleazy, questionable? Absolutely, right? There are a lot of stuff, the whole, there's a lot of stuff there. And so we're aware of it, but we're not gonna come out and accuse people of, of a crime unless there's proof. And that proof comes in the form of the court of law. OK, just wanted to clear that up real quick. For those of you who just joined, this is ProtectYourChildren.org is our website, ProtectYourChildren.org. Protect Your Children Incorporated is the organization. And uh, we're just going through some stuff here. And really quick again, on the backdrop here, on the background, probably have questions about this one, too. 
all these little light bulbs, all those little light bulbs, those those pins, if you will, are all arrested sexual predators within a quarter mile of two elementary schools and a middle school as well. Quarter mile. There's literally hundreds of them, hundreds of them, right? So this isn't just a Hollywood issue. We posted about that earlier this week. We're getting so much more focus on our pages, on our website, on our YouTube channel, Rumble. We're so thankful for all that. And everyone's all hyped up because it's about Hollywood. But you know what? We'd be doing a serious injustice if we didn't point out the fact that these predators are right in our community too. They're online. They're on your kids' devices. Okay, They're on social media. They're everywhere. These predators and these traffickers are always looking for new victims. Always. They don't stop. They're sick in the head. They're twisted and they're evil and they never stop. Which means, guess what, parents? You don't stop. You be nosy. You check their phones. You make sure they ain't got multiple profiles that you don't know about. You can do that by going on to their apps. You check their messages, see who they're talking to. You look for free gifts. You look for the attitude behavior changes that are coming out of nowhere. You got you to gotta know about all these things. Because your child may be communicating with a predator and you don't even know it. They may be being groomed by somebody through social media. Maybe it's someone they think is their age. But they don't really know that for sure. Remember, these traffickers and these predators don't have kids to abuse or to traffic unless they get them from us. Now, the southern border, that's another issue. We can't, you know, that's up to our freaking government to close that thing, right? And we do believe it needs to be closed. But as far as the kids that are disappearing in our country every day from our neighborhoods and our communities, it shouldn't be happening. Every time we see one of those alert signs or get an amber alert, child missing. Why? How did that child go missing? The statistics are like 2% of kids are kidnapped by a complete stranger. It's a very low amount. The majority are by someone that the child already knows or by a family member or a neighbor. And it's like there shouldn't be even opportunity for someone to take a child. But again, a lot of times warning signs get missed. Warning signs get missed. Anna makes a great point. And she said, that's just the ones that are registered. Yeah, on those maps. And you ready for the shocking stat? 88%. This is according to the uh, Crime Statistics, Bureau of Crime Statistics, okay? 88% of sexual predators have yet to be arrested. 88%. How did they come up with that? I have no idea. It was like a five-year-long study. But that's what they say. So just because someone doesn't have a criminal record doesn't mean they're automatically safe. Right, you still have to keep your eyes open, look for warning signs, watch for those boundaries being broken. You know, someone, an adult breaking that physical touch barrier with your child after they just met them. You know, like there, there's just a lot of weird things that's all in our in the guidelines that we have on our website. But you need to definitely keep your eyes open for those things. We're gonna check into the little bow wow situation. I got that kind of had dropped off the radar screen for a while, but we're gonna check that out. So, all right. Let's check in there with this Justin Bieber situation. Now, I want to show you a video that comes from another YouTube channel. Uh, the channel is Jamal, a.k.a. Jamal. You'll see it on the screen. Jamal, a.k.a. Jamal. Give credit to him where it came from. He does a great commentary on, on this video that we're going to show you here. There is some seriously creepy stuff. You're talking about P. Diddy patting down Justin Bieber to make sure he's not wearing a wire. I mean, listen, if that doesn't tell you something wrong, then you're living under a rock somewhere. But we're going to see a lot of crazy stuff here. And again, I'll do commentary throughout it. It's kind of long. It's about 15 minutes, but we're going to round out the show with this right now. So let's check this out again. YouTube channel, Jamal, a.k.a. Jamal. Definitely subscribe. Check him out. He does a lot of great work. So let's check this out. All right, let's see. Uh, where, where did it go? Where did it go? All right. Let's see what we got. Here we go. To Diddy. Diddy used him for rappers. If you look back at Justin Bieber career, uh, I remember working at the Staples Center and I worked Usher concert. And he brought out, um, 
I think was he an open nigga? He brought he brought out Justin Bieber and Ludacris to sing that baby song when Justin Bieber was, you know, very, very young on the rise. Um, and then years, years later, you seen like a shift in his personality. You know, he didn't seem like that happy kid anymore. And Justin Bieber was part of the flavor camp with Diddy. It's it's almost like saying Usher handed Bieber off to Diddy is what I think this video is trying to get at, at this title. But we're going to check this out. Um, just trying to stay in the know, man. Trying to stay in the know. So we ain't going to waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. The bad Man. boy. Oh, he's bad boy now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, look at this. Did y'all see his face? He looks so out of it. Oh, he's bad boy now. Oh, wow. Bad boy. Man, <laughs> look at his face. Sheesh. It looks like Diddy is asking him if he has a wire. Justin says no. Then Diddy checks to see if he has a wire. What? Yo, this is some sick. Sh oh. So apparently Justin Bieber is finally starting to come to terms with some heavy stuff regarding his early days in the music industry. Word on the street is that he's been feeling like he was manipulated and used by Usher and Diddy. And he may be finally ready to share his story. So these disturbing rumors about Justin and Diddy have been floating around for ages. And recently, Jaguar Wright threw Usher into the mix, accusing him of essentially handing Justin over to Diddy. But here's the twist. Jaguar also mentioned that Usher might have been a victim himself i'm not angry with usher he's a victim but when you decide hey i can't beat them so i'm going to join them mm. see that's what me and you got a problem this just goes to show how this evil cycle works, and I'm sincerely hoping there's a reckoning within the music industry, specifically the hip-hop industry, about this situation. But what do we really know about Diddy's connection to Justin Bieber? And where does Usher fit into all this drama? Let's get into it. I was waking up in the morning, and the first thing I was doing is popping pills and smoking a blunt and starting my day. I basically said to myself, oh my God, if you're real, you get me through this season of stopping these pills and stuff. And if you do, I'll do the rest of the work. So a bunch of old videos showing Diddy's questionable interactions with. So it's like. You, you, you look at this young kid. Who's rich, can get everything, anything he want in the world. And you say to yourself, why is he doing all this stuff? A lot of people say it's to cope with you with what either you have done or has been done to you so um yeah because i'm like i'm just like why did he turn to that stuff Justin Bieber have suddenly popped up again on the internet after Diddy's homes got raided last month as part of an ongoing federal investigation. Some of these videos are extremely unsettling to watch, and fans are now reevaluating everything about Justin's past, especially his struggles with mental health and substance abuse. Once upon a time, Justin Bieber was the biggest pop star on the planet. Yep. But these days, it seems like Justin is a shell of his former self. He always looks sad and lost, and right. it seems he doesn't have any interest in making music anymore. Last year, he made a huge move and sold off his entire music catalog for $200 million. And there's been a lot of speculation that he's officially retired from the music business. But what's really weird is that Justin seems to be steering clear of solo music these days. And yet, last September, he popped up on one of Diddy's tracks called Moments from his album, The Love Album, Off the Grid. Now, you'd think if Justin's not really into his own music anymore, he wouldn't have time to jump on someone else's project, right? Well, there's been some buzz lately about Justin either having some type of trauma bond with Diddy or being a victim of Diddy's alleged blackmail scheme. Mm. By the way, when Diddy... All right. 
That's a great point. Now, you would say, okay, well, if he went through all this traumatic stuff, and we don't know what went on at Flavor Camp, but we already know that he's being patted down for wires, which means Diddy's afraid that something's going to come out, whatever was going on there, right? Clearly, he was led into some drugs and alcohol at that young age. And I think right there, that video they were showing, he was about 14, 15 years old. Underage, clearly, right? But oftentimes with abusive relationships, what you see is even though a child tries to break away as they get older, there's still a bond there. Like there's still some kind of a weird connection that they have with that person. That could explain why he jumps on a track, all right, with him. Or it's the fact that, as they said, some, you know, sometimes hurt people hurt people. And we're not saying Justin did anything illegal, but we wouldn't be surprised if he got pulled into the situation. Like the lady was saying Usher did. She's saying Usher was a victim originally. And then he decided to like, oh, I can't beat them. I'll just join them. I'll just bring people to P. Diddy. Right? I mean, that's insane. Now, if Justin started to go down some wrong roads where he did some illegal things and Diddy knows about it, then you know what? That could keep. Justin Bieber quiet out of fear that he'll get in trouble for stuff. So that could be the other situation that's going on. Or P. Diddy's just a beautiful, nice guy and nothing bad ever happened. Right? Yeah. If you believe that one, I got a ocean property to sell you to. It's in Arizona. It's really nice. Yeah. They announced Justin's feet on his album last year he wrote this on twitter justin bieber has become one of the biggest superstars in the world i met him when he was playing his guitar outside on the street i'm honored to call him a dear friend and a brother i never had the chance to work with him until now god is the greatest but hold up why did diddy say he met justin while he was playing guitar outside on the street from what we know it was actually usher who introduced justin to diddy not some chance encounter on the sidewalk to give some context when justin was about 12 he started gaining some serious traction thanks to his mom patty Millette, who was uploading his Singing videos on YouTube. One of these videos caught the eye of controversial manager Scooter Braun, and Scooter was so convinced that Justin had what it takes to be the next big thing that he went on this whole detective mission to track him down. Scooter found the theater Justin was performing at in one of those YouTube videos, hunted down his school, and finally reached out to Patty, practically begging her to let Justin come with him to Atlanta. After some hesitation, wow. Justin's mom agreed, and at just 13 years old, Justin hopped on a plane to Atlanta with Scooter to lay down some demo tapes. And get this, just a week later, Usher himself swooped in and became Justin's mentor. Now, in the interview, now, in the interview now again, what did we see there? Remember with Eddie Furlong? That predator went to college, got the degree, everything that she needed to do to make sure to ensure that she was going to have access to Eddie Furlong for as long as she wanted, right? That's scary. Look what just happened here. That the mom literally got tracked down. Like they went to the school. They they found they found everything they needed to know on how to get access to Bieber's mom so they could influence her so they can get to Bieber. And now we find out he was 13 years old. And now he's just going off with Usher. Of course, he won't stay with Usher because Usher will hand him off to P. Diddy. How sick is this? Right? How sick, how far will these people go? What will they not do once they get their eye on somebody? And again, just to be clear, we're not accusing P. Diddy of anything or Usher of anything, but we're just looking at the facts and saying, you know what? Something doesn't seem right at all. <laughs> with the New York Times, Justin's mom spilled the beans on how Usher didn't stop at mentoring. He went the extra mile and appointed his right-hand man, Ryan Good, to be Justin's road manager, and as he put it, his swagger coach. And according to Patty, this is when she started losing control over Justin. Now keep in mind that Patty was just a teenager herself when she had Justin. And it, and it just reminds me of that whole uh, Nickelodeon thing, how they get involved yep. and just, just basically take hold control or just put push the parents to the side parents you got to be you got to be strong you can't just be letting your i mean even usher mother sent him to flavor camp you know they just be sending their kids off man once they 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 come at you and be like look this is all the money you're gonna get this and this that and that you ain't gonna have to worry about nothing no more they're like here 
Hmm. And then years later, they kind of see the decline in their child. And I mean, some of them don't even feel bad. That's true. To top it off, she had to raise him all on her own after Justin's dad, Jeremy, hit the road. Life wasn't exactly a walk in the park for Patty either. She went through some tough times and even battled with thoughts of ending it all when she was just 17. So you can imagine, Patty probably saw this opportunity with Scooter and Usher as a ticket to a better life Vulnerable. for Justin. She put all her trust in them, hoping they'd protect her son and give him the chances she never had. But as it often goes, once Scooter and Usher stepped in, Patty was completely shut out. And suddenly justin was out of her hands Man. but it gets worse Man. because usher apparently wasted no time introducing young justin to his mentor diddy back in 2009 15 year old justin got shipped off to spend 48 hours with diddy but no one bothered to explain what the purpose of this hangout was justin wasn't a rapper so what exactly was diddy supposed to teach him now as you probably exactly. know there's this video floating around from that time that's got everyone buzzing and it shows diddy talking about how he can't disclose what exactly he and Justin are up to. So where, where, where are we off to now? Where would you like to go? Um, I mean, wherever you want to go. Where are we going? Okay. We just, so check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, like you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Now, let's say Justin was just starstruck and really wanted to just hang out with Diddy. But what was Diddy's deal? What was his motivation to spend right. 48 hours with a kid who couldn't even legally drink? We right. all know what Diddy's definition of having a good time looks like. And plus, let's not forget, right. Diddy right. was 40 years old at the time. So what was his game plan? Why the sudden interest in a 15-year-old Justin? And then there's this other nugget Diddy dropped in that video about having legal guardianship over Usher. You know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he signed the Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we're going to go full, full crazy. Hold up. Legal guardianship? What's up with these parents? What in the world? I mean, talk about hanging your kid out to dry. What parent gives temporary guardianship over to somebody just because they're famous? I mean, it's just, this is absolutely unheard of. And it makes you wonder, what was the mom? Like, what? Hmm. Marla says, I lost my husband. Sorry to hear that. When my son was only three, I became very overprotective. No way in hell would I let some man alone with him. There you go. That's mama bear. And Anna says they preyed on someone else's misfortune. That's exactly what they did. And, you know, a quick point before we finish this up is predators can be very convincing, right? I mean, according to the limelight and the public, you know, it's Usher, right? He's famous. He's got money. Great smile. Seems like a nice guy. Sings love songs. Who would ever think that he would be a bad guy? You know? And P. Diddy, yeah, he's famous. He's a rapper. And he sings about love, too. And, you know, why would he be a bad guy, right? You can't just look at people's appearance and how they look on the outside. You really got to get to know somebody. Right. You got to get to know them. You got to know them in all seasons. You need to know you need to you need to check their character. You need to know a lot about somebody. You don't just send your kid off with a complete stranger. I don't care who they are. For 48 hours and say, hey, for 48 hours, he's all yours. Here, 40 year old man, spend 48 hours with that 15 year old son and just go all over the place. And don't worry about it. Everything's cool. Unbelievable. Parents letting Diddy have custody right, of their teenage man. sons. And as you probably know, Usher himself spilled the beans, admitting he was just 13 or 14 when L.A. Reid oh. shipped him off to Puffy Flavor Camp. And that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was... <laughs> and it was but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. And then there's also this bizarre video of Kevin Hart interviewing Diddy, where Diddy 
says he and Usher used to wake up and wrestle when Usher was 10. I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before Pause was invented, you know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early. <laughs> Mind you, Diddy is 10 years older than Usher. So what did Diddy mean when he said he used to wake up and wrestle? Y'all, this is getting seriously creepy, and I don't know how anyone could justify this type of behavior. Now, over time, it looks like Usher and Diddy have kind of drifted apart. But get this, Diddy had this knack for putting Usher in awkward situations, especially when the cameras were rolling. There's a clip that's been making the rounds again, showing Diddy straight up putting Usher on the spot and asking why they don't hang out as much anymore. Something ain't right, you all. It's nothing like fellowshipping, you know? Right. So we see each other around, but we don't get it. Usher, how you been, man? I've been seeing so long. How much did we drink? <laughs> <laughs> Uh -oh, uh -oh. Hey, Nick. Hey, Diddy, you gone. You don't even know what's going on. <laughs> you trying to say something, Azure? I'm trying to say something. What do you want to say? I don't know if I should, but I'm what? trying. Well, we drank a little bit. You drank a lot. Because <laughs> you drank that whole can of beer. Yeah, you drank that beer. You drank two shots of tequila. Yeah, right. You drank fired one Kuiper Let me say fired up. Yeah. That's your bro, right? Fired up. Mm -hmm. I like the fired up. Up. Your forehead is sweating like Uncle mm -hmm. Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> and now, check out how Diddy did the same thing with Justin in this video video that was recorded when they ran into each other about a year after that 48-hour hangout. Everything's good? Definitely Selling good. out arenas and everything? Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't... Good friend. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, you know partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But he's seen so never uncomfortable. Got my number, so correct. Okay. My number? Yeah, yeah. There's also been some serious gossip swirling around that it was actually Diddy who first introduced Justin to the party scene and illegal substances. And word on the street is that this whole ordeal is what fueled Justin's desire to protect other young artists from falling into the same trap. Check out how Justin broke down crying in his 2020 interview with Zane Lowe over talking about his friendship with Billie Eilish and why he's so protective of her. It was hard for me. For me. All right, before we before we jump into that, and that, that is an emotional part, but you can clearly see Bieber's nervous. You know, when when it when he's being called out by Diddy saying, Hey, you, we don't talk anymore. What well, what's going on? You you don't call me. And like that's that's Diddy trying to get a feel for what's going on. You know, is, is Bieber mad at him? Is there is there a threat of exposure there? He's trying to just make everything look, look all good. He did the same thing with Usher. Now, we're not saying Diddy's a predator, right? We're not going to get sued here, but that, that is kind of a predator tactic. You know, they want to keep tabs on the child, right? They want to kind of see how they're feeling and see what's going on and see if they're still friends, right? I mean, that's one of these tactics that, that, that these predators use. So it's interesting that he's like telling Justin, hey, you're not talking to me much anymore. What's going on? Are we all good? Like, I'm trying to get a hold of you and you don't call me back. Yeah, Bieber's probably trying to like get the heck out of Dodge. But he gets put on the spot with all the cameras, and he's got to respond. It's just creepy in the absolute extreme. Absolutely. All right, let's finish this up. Being that young and being in the industry and not knowing where to turn and everyone, you know, telling me they love me and, you know, just turn their back on you in a second. Um, so if she ever needs me, I'm going to be here for her, but... Um, but yeah, just protecting those moments because people take for granted uh, encounters. And um, mm, I just want to protect her. Clip is you brought know? to you by Apple Music. I don't want her to you know. go through anything I went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. And now there are two more sketchy videos of Justin making the rounds online. And they're enough to make your skin crawl at the thought of what Diddy might have put Justin through. So this first video shows Diddy patting down Justin and seemingly checking to make sure he's not wearing a recording device. And did you see how Justin kept looking at the ground and avoiding looking Diddy in the face? I mean, you don't have to be a body yep. language expert to see that Justin Justin is clearly intimidated and afraid of this demon. But it gets worse, y'all. There's this other video of Justin partying with Diddy's equally problematic friends, Trey Songz and Odell Beckham Jr. And not only does Justin look like he's completely out of it, but at one point he appears to, you know what, I can't even say what this looks like, so I'll just let you watch and be the judge. Now, some folks are saying that Justin was doing a bump of that Coca-Cola without the cola. 
if you know what I mean. But others have pointed out that the way Odell moves his hands after Justin gets up makes it look like they were doing something else. Either way, this whole Absolutely situation does. is beyond disgusting and sad. And whatever Justin went through, let's just hope he can heal and find peace. As for Justin potentially testifying against Diddy, well, sources close to Justin are saying he's still torn about whether to address the situation or not. One source who recently spoke to In Touch Weekly said, Justin doesn't really want to talk publicly about his relationship with Diddy, but he may have to. I'm not sure if Diddy did anything that Justin now thinks crossed the line, but if he does, he's not saying. If Justin has to address his past interactions with Diddy, he will. As for Usher, he's been keeping a low profile since Diddy's houses got raided. He recently paid a visit to Russell Simmons in Bali, and rumor has it, Usher is looking for a way out before this whole thing blows over. And while some fans are saying Usher shouldn't be blamed if Diddy actually did something to Justin, others think he's at least partially responsible, because he knew exactly what Diddy was like. One fan said, yep. I don't get it. Where's the outrage for Usher? He handed 15-year-old Justin Bieber over to Diddy for 48 unsupervised hours, knowing fully well what that monster was capable of. He's just as responsible for whatever took place. And another person wrote, Usher is a victim, which is sad, but he eventually grew up to become the instead of breaking the chain. Once Justin Bieber was in Usher's space, Usher definitely shouldn't have brought him around Diddy, knowing the ish he does. It's sad all around, to be honest. But let me know how you feel about the situation. Do you think Justin will ever speak out publicly about his relationship with Diddy? And should Usher um, take some of the blame if Diddy did something to Justin? Drop your comments below and make... All right. Unbelievable. What do you all think? Oh, what a wicked web. But will Bieber come out? What do you think? We hope that he will. But a lot of times, especially in these high profile cases, there's always something on somebody, right? Jeffrey Epstein unalived himself, right? Yeah, sure. There's always something going on. And, and if Usher or Diddy has stuff on Bieber, he may just stay quiet. Or perhaps there'll be something worked out. Um, where he can't get in trouble for whatever crimes, whatever they're holding against him. But we hope it does come out. Because this whole thing needs to, to be exposed. You know, when evil is brought into the light, it loses its power. True statement. But as long as it's in the darkness, and all everybody can do is just say they think, they think, they think, they think. Well, saying we think something isn't going to get nowhere. Until enough people are speaking loud enough saying something's not right, something's not right, something's not right. Investigate. Investigate. Putting the pressure on. Right? That's what needs to take place. But whether it's Edward Furlong or Drake Bell or Justin Bieber or Amanda Bynes or Miranda Cosgrove or all these young kids that were born to have a successful life, they were born to be successful and creative and talented. And people stopped paying attention. People turned a blind eye. People got blindsided with with, with lust and, and greed and let their kids be abused, addicted to drugs, and destroyed. That's it. And it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. We're about done for tonight. I'm going to wrap this up. Before we do, we'll let you know really quick again about our website. Protectyourchildren.org. Protectyourchildren.org. All our links to our social media are there. In-depth protection packet to keep your kids safe. Click right there. English and Spanish. Tips on preventing child kidnapping. There's a whole lot of great stuff on our website. Protectyourchildren.org. Definitely check that out. This in-depth protection packet is so important. We mentioned it at the beginning of the show. We're going to round out the show with it. 
This is detailed guidelines that you can go over with your kids. Warnings for them to look out for, warning signs, lookouts for parents, personality profiles of predators, different tricks, threats, and traps that, that predators use to get kids trapped, um, threats of online social media, how social media predators work. Everything is contained in this guideline packet, free to download from protectedchildren.org. Just click on the in-depth protection packet and be equipped, be educated, be more aware and help your kids to be more safe and have a fighting chance, right? Because it is nuts out there. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. All right. That's about it. We'll uh, thank everybody for being here. Had some great numbers tonight. We ask that you would share this show. Um podcast is available about 15 minutes and we'll be re we'll repost the podcast uh, for the next couple of days all over our social medias please share click like click subscribe comment all that does help the algorithms push the the, the content out further uh it's not just something that youtubers say it really is true you know so please we ask you to do that and everybody being here tonight marla anna alba a lot of new faces tonight we well, thank you uh, thankful for you to be here. A couple of Facebook users with no names. So we'll just we'll just say thank you, Facebook users. So, but in any case, uh, definitely please share the content. And we look forward to another live show next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, God willing. And uh, in the meantime, keep an eye on our social media. We post every single day throughout the week, all sorts of content. You never know what's going to pop up. But if it does pop up, it's good for you and your kids to know. That's our goal. So thank you again for being here. This is Chris with Protect Your Children Incorporated, protectyourchildren.org, protectyourchildren.org. Check it out, in-depth protection guideline packet. You can also make a donation to help offset the cost of what we're doing uh, and help us to promote the content to get it out to even more people. It's tax deductible, receipts will be given. Nobody takes a salary here. Everything is going directly back into the organization. So if you can do that, We'd be greatly appreciated for that. ProtectedChildren.org. Click on donate to help us out today. So thank you. Everybody have a great night. Have a great week. We'll see you on social media. Take care.